history was cruel to Marion Davies. She was considered a gifted actress during the silent movie era, but by the time she died, the media portrayed her as an untalented social climber. She was very close with her nieces and nephews. One in particular was her favorite. Marion would leave her a very large sum of money. Why did Davies single her out? A deathbed confession would reveal a shocking Hollywood scandal. Marion Duris started her career as a chorus girl at the Zigbeat Follies along with her older sisters. To appear more British, the girls changed their last name to Davies. One evening, a very special guest visited the Follies, newspaper tycoon William Randolph Hearst, who set his sights on Marion Davies. Hearst terrified Davies, who was just a teenager. Every night for eight weeks, Hearst sat in the front row at the Follies so that he could watch Davies. He sent her gifts, but he didn't approach her. One day, a Broadway studio hired Davies to appear in a series of photos. As she posed, she made a horrifying realization. Hearst was lurking in the background of the photo studio. Later, she learned that he'd arranged the entire shoot. In 1918, Hearst formed Cosmopolitan Pictures. The first actress he signed? You guessed it, Marion. She agreed to a $500 per week exclusive contract, a real dream come true. But Davies got more than she bargained for. As soon as the contract was signed, she began a romantic relationship with the very married Hearst. Hearst owned the largest newspaper and media chain in the country. Sources estimate that he spent over $7 million promoting Davis's career, and it worked. Davis appeared in an average of three films a year for the next 10 years, and they were basically all hits. In fact, she was so successful that theater owners gave her the title of Queen of the Screen, but behind the scenes, she struggled. Hearst's devotion to Davies often bordered on obsession, and he was wildly jealous. He even controlled who she acted with, often insisting that she be cast opposite middle-aged or gay-leading men. She was known for her sense of adventure and wicked sense of humor. Making people laugh was Davis's forte, but Hearst preferred to see her in costume dramas and demanded that producers cast her in historical pieces. Hearst's meddling did a lot of damage to her career. Throughout the Roaring Twenties, Hearst and Davies were inseparable, despite the fact that Hearst was still very much married to his first wife, Millicent Wilson. Wilson refused to grant him a divorce, but she eventually moved to New York. Hearst and Davies were free to shack up together. They moved into Hearst Castle, a beautiful palatial estate overlooking the Pacific Ocean. While they were not official on paper, they never really tried to keep their affair a secret. It was known as the worst kept secret in Hollywood. Hearst Castle became the playground for Hollywood superstars like Clark Gable, Carol Lombard, Charlie Chaplin, Buster Keaton, and so many others. Guests would arrive by private train or fly into the private airstrip. What followed was a weekend of activities like horseback riding, golf, picnics, and tennis. There was only one rule, everyone had to gather promptly for cocktails at 7.30 p.m. on Saturday nights. Each guest was only allowed one cocktail, and it was forbidden to keep alcohol in your room. By this point, Davies had developed something of a drinking problem, and this was Hearst's way of trying to keep it under control. Still, guests often broke the rule, and Marion frequently found her way to the bottle anyway. Davies and Hearst hosted the best parties in Hollywood, but there was trouble in paradise. Hearst cheated on Davies frequently, but Davies knew exactly how to get back at him. She had an affair with Charlie Chaplin, which infuriated Hearst. One weekend, Hearst invited the legendary film producer Thomas Insey to join him, Davies, and a number of other guests aboard his yacht. While aboard the yacht, Insey experienced some stomach pain, he made his way home where he unfortunately passed away. Doctors concluded that it was a heart condition, but the headlines the next morning read, movie producer shot on Hearst yacht. To make things even more suspicious, the headline disappeared from the evening edition of the same paper later that day. 
people began to spread rumors that Hearst, enraged with jealousy over Davis's affair with Chaplin, had shot Incy by accident. None of the guests aboard the yacht that night would talk to the police. Law enforcement released a statement confirming that the cause of Incy's death had been a heart issue, but the damage was done. After all the attention, Hearst and Davies preferred to keep a low profile. Davies continued to appear in hit films, but her close association with Hearst was overshadowing her career. He couldn't stop himself. He'd have her name put up in lights everywhere he could, and her face plastered across his newspapers. Eventually, people began to get sick of her. Throughout the years, Davies remained close to her older sisters and doted on her nieces and nephews. Marion essentially raised her niece Peppy. When Peppy grew up, she battled with addiction. She visited Hearst and Davies in the spring of 1935 with her girlfriend. Due to her ongoing substance abuse and same-sex relationship, Hearst had Peppy committed to a mental institution. Just days afterward, she leapt from a hospital window and took her own life. The loss devastated Davies, and she took months off to mourn her beloved niece. The 30s were a brutal turning point for the couple. Hearst's businesses were in big trouble. Davies sold whatever she could and wrote Hearst the check for $1 million to save him from bankruptcy. Despite the affairs, fights, money issues, and drinking, Hearst and Davies stuck together. Davies told one of her friends that she'd never leave Hearst. By 1941, Davies and Hearst had all but retreated from the public eye. That year, director Orson Welles' masterpiece, Citizen Kane, came out. The film's Kane was a wealthy media magnate who lived in a castle and whose second wife was an untalented opera singer with a drinking problem. The comparisons between Kane and Hearst couldn't be denied. Instead of ignoring Kane, Hearst tried to block the release of the movie. This only drew more attention to how similar he was to Kane. Wells denied that he based the character of Susan Alexander Kane on Davies, but the damage was done, and the idea of Davies as a sad, failed actress followed her to the grave. During Hearst's final days in 1951, Davies was very upset. Hearst's sons ordered doctors to sedate her. Davies woke up in an empty bed. Hearst had passed in the night. His associates had removed his body along with any evidence that he'd ever lived in the house with Davies at all. She never had a chance to say goodbye. Davies didn't attend the funeral. It was unclear if she'd made the choice for herself or if Hearst's wife and sons had forbidden her to go. After all, he never did get that pesky divorce. Hearst left Davies controlling shares in his company. But mere weeks after Hearst's passing, Davies relinquished most of the stock. A day later, Davies married a sea captain named Horace Brown in a quickie ceremony on Halloween in Las Vegas. The newlyweds both struggled with alcoholism. Eventually, the drinking caught up with Davies. She was diagnosed with bone cancer and the disease took her life in 1961. Davies was 64 years old at the time of her passing. And afterward, one of her darkest secrets finally came out. Marion Davies had always been close with her nieces and nephews, but one in particular had been her favorite, her sister's daughter, Patricia. She'd spent extensive time with Hearst and Davies, and Davies left her a sizable inheritance when she passed. In 1993, Patricia made a shocking deathbed confession. She revealed that Davies and Hearst were in fact her real mother and father, not her aunt and uncle. At the beginning of their relationship, Davies got pregnant, and Hearst sent her to France to give birth away from prying eyes. At the same time, Davies' sister Rose lost a child. Davies gave Rose the baby, and they fudged the paperwork. Both Davies and Hearst confessed their secret and circumstances of her birth at different times. Patricia was finally free to reveal who she really was. Marion Davies' circumstances did not allow her to raise her own daughter with the man she loved. This was perhaps even more tragic than her false legacy as Hearst's untalented social climbing mistress. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe for more fascinating content.